Okay. Um, have you ever been in a sales situation where, you know, uh, you just felt the resistance that uh, somebody just stonewalled you and you just, no matter what you did, it was clear they were not going to buy, period. And then, you know, the, the opposite where you just uh, talk to them about a few things or whatever, and then all of a sudden, bam, they're actually asking you to buy. But what's the difference between those two? Well, it's about the type of buyer and what stage they're in. My name is Robert Poole, and today we're going to talk about the three different types of buyers and, and the three different stages of buyers, I should say, um, and how we actually market to each one of those. So, and uh, let me let me start there with marketing. Um, just we're on the same page. Marketing is really about changing beliefs, changing beliefs from a prospect to believe that um, they uh, need your product or your service more than they need the money in your pocket a, or the, in their pocket. It's as simple as that. Um, and sales is really about getting somebody to act right now. So we're not going to talk about the sales aspect of it. We're just going to talk about the marketing aspect today and those three stages uh, that buyers find themselves in because they buyers will change those stages over time also. Um, but we also but we want to target the, the right message to the right uh, person at the right time. Um, you know, so if we, uh, you know, assume that we've got our... Um, ideal client uh, down, so to speak. I talked about that on another video uh, about how we have to define our client very specifically, um, our customers who we want to do business with very specifically. If we know all that, um, you've got a, a pool and hopefully a small enough pool, um, you know, depending on your product or service. I mean, it could be, you know, it could be a hundred companies, uh, you know, uh, nationwide, or it could be, you know, a million. Um, but point is, is it really well defined? Is it very specialized? So I'm going to assume you got all that down. If you're not, go ahead and, and check out that other video. Um, and speaking of which, uh, please subscribe and, and uh, to the channel. It really helps us to get the word out and get the videos out to other people that have a similar interest. And, you know, um, of course, uh, um, in addition to subscribing, you know, I'd really love to hear your comments, uh, what you think about the videos, if you have any questions, uh, share them, hit that like button, all that youtube -y stuff. Um, so I really appreciate that. Um, but so once we've got our, our ideal client defined, uh, then again, we want to go after these three types of buyers in different ways. So I'm just going to go through these, uh, you know, sort of one at a time and explain and this is some, of, some of my wording. Um, and I'll call this, this first category of buyer, I'm going to call these guys the fanatics. Uh, and, you know, no, we're not talking about extremists, um, other than the sense that they are very committed. So these are the committed people. I think um, the easiest way I like to think about this um, is uh, the people that will camp outside of an Apple store three days before the new iPhone's released. Now, that person is committed to Apple products. I guarantee their whole house is filled. They've got Apple TV and they've got a Mac. They've got, um, you know, iPhones. They've got um, iPads, all that kind of good stuff. Um, you're probably not going to find a PC in their house um, or Android phones or whatever. Um, because they are fanatical about that um, generally, you know, somebody who's got a bumper sticker that says Apple on it, you know, um, you know, it's those are the people that, you know, are committed to a company, a product or service. It's almost like um, it's almost like a cause, you know, for them. Um, you know, they uh, tell their friends and family and their colleagues about it, you know, and you're not going to be able to talk about that product or, or that company or whatever. Um, and get them to change their mind that it's not the greatest thing in the sliced bread. So, um, you know, it, so you've got examples of that. Apple's an easy one, you know, I mean, but you think about other things, you know, Yeti, you know, why, is some, why are they able to sell a cooler for $300 versus, you know, $30 at Target or whatever? Again, it's because they have fanatical, committed, you know, customers. And of course, you know, that's, you know, we would all love to have that, but, the, you know, what we're talking about now is when we're, out in the marketplace looking at our group of potential ideal clients, you know, um, you know, what are the three different types there? And this is the first type that we're going to run into, you know, and unfortunately the fanatics, you know, um, they're going to be really hard to sell. Um, just like I, I mentioned, you know, with a, if you just pick a picture an Apple user, trying to convince them to switch to an Android phone or whatever, it's like, it can happen. But, you know, it's like a, you know, 95% of the time, you know, boom. And that's what that brick wall is, what, what I was talking about when the video opened about 
that sales situation where you run into a brick wall and this person will not buy no matter what you say. Um, and it is because they are in the fanatic stage. They're a fanatical buyer, if you will. Um, you know, and, you know, from a marketing standpoint, you know, it, can these people be sold? Yes, but it takes a very long time, uh, or typically. Um, and it's the way you do it is through chipping away at belief systems over time. Uh, and that's why it takes so long is because you have to do really subtle um, belief, you know, uh, changing of beliefs. You know, I've done whole videos on how you change beliefs, but just really small little steps, you know, it may take a hundred steps, a hundred little mini belief changes before they get to where they're even in the next stage, which we'll talk about in a second. Uh, so they're not the best um, people, you know, um, and not the easiest to sell. So, you know, um, this is... Um, and one of the other reasons that you'll see them change over time uh, and change one of these other phases is not because of anything um, to do with the product or service, but it could be a life change, you know. They got married, they had children, they did whatever, you know, they moved geographies. That's when, that's when things will typically move faster, but all things being equal, it's going to take a very long time to sell those people. So um, the, the next category is... Um, I, I call it sort of the uh, the ambivalent category, uh, and it's just what it what it sounds like. Um, and, um, and so these are the wishy washy sort of um, status quo type of people, uh, and and it's not a bad thing. That just means that you know they're not they're not committed to a product or a service necessarily. So you know um, they're kind of happy where they are, and they're not you know, unhappy, they're not happy, they're just kind of, it's kind of there, you know. Um, example, I always like to use, um, you know, I've got, um, you know, in Arizona, you know, that you got a lot of bugs and stuff, you know, scorpions, etc. So a lot of people have uh, pest control companies that come and spray, do a lot of which, you know, we do. And, and um, you know, um, even though they come and spray and do their thing or whatever, it's like, <clears throat> we still get scorpions and other stuff and, and they annoy me with things every that now and then, you know, but it's one of those things that it's like, it's not an annoyance enough that for me, make me change. You know, it's kind of like, eh, you know, I should, I should find somebody, you know, better. If the better deal came along, maybe I'd switch, you know, it wasn't too much hassle. Um, but by and large, I'm just kind of like, eh, you know, one way or the other, definitely not fanatically endorsing it. And I'm definitely a lot. I hate this company. Um, and so, you know, if you look at the, these people, you know, that they, they may not even realize that they, that they have a problem necessarily. Um, they might realize, you know, yeah, I've got, a, I'm, I've got this solution right now. It's kind of solving my problem and it's good enough. Um, or they might go, oh, you know, well, I, I don't even think I have a problem, you know, so to speak, but in, in the sense that um, our proctor service could solve that problem for them. Um, and so they can be kind of happy and, you know, unaware, so to speak. And so, you know, the, the goes back to the likelihood, how likely are they to buy? Again, you know, it's like, they're not the hardest to sell, but, you know, you can sell them, um, but it's, um, you're going to have to get them to move. And, and the way you do that is through pain. Um, so you want to sell them um, through pain. So you almost are selling them on pain and selling them and pointing out things and, and kind of poking the bear and, and stick at them and say, hey, you know, um, you know what? Your situation is not as good as you think it is. Um, and you've got to give them reasons to change. You know, you've got to really, you know, stick that knife in and twist it, so to speak. You've got to get them to, you know, uh, come up with justification for them to change and emotions to change. Uh, and again, this goes back to beliefs, uh, you know, that I talked about originally. Um, and how we get somebody to move um, is by changing those beliefs. And if we can get them to believe that it's worth the effort to change, then, hey, they're going to do it. Um, whereas, you know, if we're, if we send them the wrong marketing message, uh, they're not going to change because they're kind of happy and they're there, you know, so to speak. Um, and so, um, again, we just have to exacerbate the pain if we want to market to them. And then, you know, the last uh, category these are the these are the best ones for us to sell. These are the dissatisfied. Wait, I'm not spelling that right. Okay, you know what I'm trying to say here. Dissatisfied. 
Um, so these are the people that are actively annoyed or more than annoyed with whatever their current solution is. They know they've got a problem um, and they're definitely not happy with whatever they're doing to fix it. They're either very frustrated because they think there's no solution um, and or they have some kind of solution, you know, um, you know, the classic is the cable company, you know, um, you know, everybody hates the cable company or whatever. Um, but if you've got a vendor that you deal with that is just, they drive you nuts and, you know, it's overpriced and, you know, bad service. And then, you know, it's like, if you had a, you know, chance to switch, bam, you'd do it in a heartbeat. And that's, that's the dissatisfied buyer. And those of course are the easiest ones to sell. So these guys are, are super easy to sell. Uh, and this is really where we want to spend a lot of our time. And, you know, that may seem obvious, but, um, you know, if we go back and we look at a lot of times people are trying to sell things to people who are in the wrong stage and they don't even realize it. And then we'll talk about that in a minute. But um, think about, uh, you know, again, this is one of those things, things can change, too, that as you shift from being in that sort of uh, ambivalent stage to going to dissatisfied. You know, gym memberships are always a classic, you know. I mean, uh, um, gyms make all their money because everybody signs up for the gym, you know, to pay the 50 bucks a month or whatever it is, you know, because um, they're, you know, I'm going to work out this year, I'm going to use resolution, whatever. Um, and then nobody ever shows up after January. Um, and they make all their money off of all those who are not showing up. Um, but, and so, you know, you might be paying your $50 a month and you're like, oh, I know I should cancel, but, you know, no, no, no. Um, you know, maybe I'll get back to the gym later this year. Uh, I don't want to have to start and stop again. You know, what, you know, you're basically that ambivalent buyer, but then suddenly the gym does something, they raise the price to $75 or they cut their hours, you know, so that it's definitely not convenient. So they're only open from eight to five. They're like, well, I'm at work. What is that going to do? You know, going to do it. Um, so they've made a change that's going to switch you from that um, that ambivalent buyer to the dissatisfied and suddenly now you got motivation and if some other gym comes along and says hey we're going to fix that problem for you we're going to we're, we're going to keep it at fifty dollars and we'll give you a two-year contract or you know work 24 hours a day or any number of things that solves that problem it's like bam you, you can move right away so of course you know these are the people that we want to spend our time going after because they're the easiest sell. it's the lowest hanging fruit concept um, and all we're going to do is just give them, give them an out. So give them, you know, a solution that, you know, fixes whatever their current situation is. Uh, and they're easy. A lot of times, you, we may, all we got to do is make them aware that there's a superior solution. And it's like, you know, it goes back to the HSC model, which I've talked about on, on other videos. But, you know, a lot of times they'll be closing us. They'll be asking us, where do I sign, you know, so to speak, because they're in the stage here. Um, and to all three of these, you know, um, stages of buyers, um, you, we've got to realize where they are. And we've got to focus on them in the right priority. So obviously, you know, when it comes to priorities, we want to work with the dissatisfied people um, first, then the ambivalent if we have to, and then finally the fanatics. Um, and so... What happens a lot of times is that I've seen over the years, and I know I've done this at times, is we kind of treat these all the same. Um, and what I mean by we treat them the same is we'll put the same amount of effort and we'll put the same, we'll use the same marketing message. Just as just like it's, it's the major problem to target your marketing message to the wrong people, uh, meaning people who are not your ideal customer or client, um, it's just as bad to target um, the wrong stage of buyer that, the, that those potential ideal clients are in. So if we're targeting uh, the fanatics, if we're going after those Apple users, if, we're, if our marketing message is geared towards them, good luck, you know, we're, you know it's gonna take us forever to sell them. Um, and so where do we wanna, we wanna uh, target our message to these people? And so we've all got limited resources, particularly as small businesses, you know, and so we want to spend, you know, probably 70% of our time in going out the dissatisfied people. So, you know, our, if we're using social media or advertising or content, whatever, um, if you're doing direct mail, if you're doing cold calling, if any number of um, sales and marketing techniques, if you're using those, you want to make sure that that message 
is appropriate to where those buyers are and what stage and who that's going to attract and quite frankly who it's going to repel because if we target towards uh, like for instance the dissatisfied and we are showing them hey there's a better solution that solves the pain that you're in right now uh, that's going to resonate with them and they're going to go yeah hey talk to me about that we do the same thing with the fanatics and they're going to go uh, you know i'm very happy and i absolutely love you know what i'm doing so why are you talking to me uh, it's going to fall in deaf ears and so we've got to develop our marketing messages Focus primarily on the dissatisfied. We can't do it on the ambivalent. And why would we do it? Because, you know, a lot of times the ambivalent can be shifted into the dissatisfied with some subtle marketing. It doesn't take, sometimes it doesn't take too much of a push to get them to do that. Trying to get the fanatics to move into the ambivalent and dissatisfied, a lot more difficult. Like I said, a lot more time, but it can be done. And, you know, in the past I would have said, you know, don't waste your time with the fanatics. Focus, you know, all on the dissatisfied and the ambivalent. But, you know, with today's technology, with automation, you know, um, there's really no excuse for not um, marketing to the fanatics as well. Do you want to spend a ton of your time on that? But, you know, if you spend 5% of your time on it, you know, not a big deal. If you don't have any time at all and you're just really strapped, then, of course, don't waste your time on that. But a lot of times with automation, you know, uh, email lists and things like that that, you know, um, are extremely easy and very um uh, time efficient to do, then we can put those things out there and, hey, you know, it, because of the, the very little effort that it takes, you know, it may take two years to convert one of those fanatics to even, you know, an ambivalent, uh, but, you know, it can be worth it over time depending on, you know, of course, your the size of your sale, you know, do you want to um, spend all your time on trying to go out for fanatics who are fanatical about a $20 product? Probably not. That probably is a waste of your time, but if these fanatics are, uh, you know, buy a hundred thousand dollar product. If it takes five years to work on them, it's worth your time. Um, and so again, we prioritize. We give up the dissatisfied first. The ambivalent, try to move them into the dissatisfied. Um, tailor that, and then use some automation on the fanatics. Um, and so, if again, if we find our ideal buyer, uh, this pool of buyers that is a subset of the larger market the type of people that we want to do business with, that we should do business with. Um, and then we can target our messages specifically for what stage they're in. You know, it's going to skyrocket our success and our closing ratio. Because if we spend all our time with, you know, like I said, going after, you know, using a marketing message that <clears throat> only goes after the ambivalent, you know, it's going to work. But why do we not go after the little hiding fruit first? That just doesn't make any sense. So, um, so go through your marketing and look at what kind of message and who it's going to appeal to, because you may find that if you have, you know, five different marketing messages, you know, you've got, you know, something you're doing on social media, you got something you're doing direct mail, you got something to do you a cold call, whatever. Um, if you look at those and you go, you know what, that's really, that's talking about, you know, pain and getting somebody out of, you know, a specific or, or letting them know about a solution that they probably don't know about. It's probably targeting these people. But if it's just strictly a, hey, here's the solution. We know you got a problem. We know you're unhappy with what you got going on. We totally get it. And here's how you can improve that. Here's how you can get out of that. Then, you know, it's going towards the dissatisfied. And if all your marketing messages are, are geared towards the ambivalent or even the fanatics, you know, you're, you're missing out on the dissatisfied. So, uh, which is the, the easiest, lowest hanging fruit. So, um, we really got to take some time and, and think about it. In terms of that, when we're creating those marketing messages, when we're creating a strategy of what buyers would go after first, what the, who are the prospects that we're going after first? So if you make this priority, it will make a huge difference in your business. Um, I hope this is content was helpful. Again, I really appreciate you subscribe to the channel and uh, hit that like button for the video so more people can see it. Um, and uh, there's a lot of other great videos and, and things that are coming out uh, every week on our channel. So um, thanks for your time, and I'll talk to you soon.